Hello everyone, Man Adventures here for a not too long this week in keyboards. And there are some topics that caught my eye this week. For those who might not have got the announcement last episode, I'll be transitioning this show into a twice a week ordeal with slightly shorter episodes so I can deliver more up-to-date news to everyone as well as have more time to go over certain topics that I think may need a bit more explanation. So stay tuned for another video for this week in keyboards this week as well. This video was sponsored by Kono.Store where you can still hop in on GMK Merlin and SA Berserk right now. GMK Merlin is a groovy set by our favorite QMK Wizard Mac Merlin while SA Berserk Round 2 takes inspiration from one of the best anime of all time, Evangelion. Check out these sets over at Kono.Store and through the links in the description down below. Let's get to the news. First up is the interest check for the Kendo by 159. The Kendo is a split HHKB layout top featuring top mounted plate and a seven degree typing angle. The plate is top mounted, which is nice and will be available as a four millimeter palm, brass and carbon fiber with a foam core as options. Honestly, I love the idea of this keyboard. Split HHKB, not too bad. So with the PCB, there will be four different dollar board controller boards. Hmm. Does that mean there's going to be two different kinds of daughter boards for each side? That's what I would guess. I also hope that means we can plug the board into our computer using either side of the setup, which would be really convenient. So far, the price is a bit on the high side, but machining four different pieces of case and two pieces of plate probably does add up that machine time. The cost is looking to range between 425 and 475 depending on which plate option you go with. Connecting both sides will be a USB-C cable, nice touch. Based on these prototypes, I think it looks pretty nice, and honestly, I'm impressed with a setup like this. Part of me wish they went full split and had the case wrap around to the center, so even if you put both sides of the case together, you'd still have some case between them. Definitely wanting people to be all split. Aside from that, it's a pretty looking, pretty decent looking kit and I might be in it when it, we'll have to see. Moving on, we have GMK Missing Keys by jenny 80 k This group buy is an add-on kit for Cherry OG keycaps and let you convert your vintage Cherry ISO sets to ANSI, as well as provide compatibility for 40%, 60%, 65%, 75%, and 1800 style boards. That's a pretty good deal of compatibility to bring to these old school classical sets. Honestly, it's a great way for people to harvest old keycaps and give them modern compatibility. I like the idea of this, and it's not too expensive. In the US, it's running by Canon Keys for $49, with equivalent pricing in Europe through mykeyboard.eu and Asia's ilumkb.com. This set is running until the end of the month, so hop on if you're planning on harvesting an old cherry board, or you already have one that you want to use with one of your current boards with a different layout. Next up, we have Oblotsky's GMK ASCII. Inspired by a micro switch Hall Effect keyboard that Oblotsky saw when he was visiting Kona last year, he wants to recreate that set in Cherry Profile. I think all the sub legends are pretty cool, and pretty cool is like understating it. It's very awesome. It's a very simple two tone colorway, and it speaks to a nice simplicity in colors. You could place this set on a ton of boards of varying colors and it would work out great due to only having those two colors. The set is expected to run in November on Conot Store as well as My Keyboard EU and Z Frontier. Both colors are stock GMK colors, meaning this set probably won't have a crazy expensive price nor have a ridiculous MOQ, but then again, if we're in that post MOQ timeline, that won't matter. Sub Legends might bump the price up. The set will be using GMK's row zero and row five for the top and bottom rows respectively, I think that works really well with the old school aesthetic this set brings to the table. Honestly, row 5 is the bottom row. I think it's criminally underrated when people are designing sets these days. Row 0 even less since we don't see that many sets at all since they're pretty tall and for a lot of boards we'd need two escape keys, a row 0 and a row 1 version. I like this. I'll be keeping my eyes on it and it looks like November is starting to get pretty stacked up with some good stuff. Up next, we have an interest check. For GMK Noel by Aguilera. 
This set attempts to recreate the magic of Noel, a character from Sora No Method into GMK keycaps. It's a pretty nice pastel looking set using WS1 for alphas and custom colors for everything else. Speaking of the colors, my guess is that they're not going to be the final colors just yet, since OP is yet to obtain a RAL book. My guess is that um, right now it's the main portion of the interest check is the feedback portion, the collect feedback phase. My advice is to obtain said RAL booklet. All monitors display covered colors differently, so who knows if what you're seeing on your screen now is the same exact as intended for this set. As long as it keeps the general theme and colors, I think it has potential once those RAL colors are finalized. Here on Sub Legends, also an A plus for me, although the mod colored pipe backslash key seems a bit unnecessary. Okay, the next board is an interesting one. It's the discrete 87 by iQnix, and uh, the top is anything but discreet. Uh, the split in this board combined with the giant nameplate that moves the print screen, scroll lock, and pause keys down is definitely on the loud side. That squished together navigation cluster also looks really odd on a TKL. I'm not the biggest fan of having the arrow keys touch the navigation cluster on this TKL because suddenly it looks way more cramped. The back and bottom are certainly interesting with half the bottom going up and covering the back side and a part of the front side as well on the opposite. It's a nice accent that the thing looks pretty decent. Based on the exploded view, yeah, it's just that one that one big bottom that goes front and back. That might cost a pretty penny. We'll have to wait and see. And right now all we have are these renders, no other details about angle, height or mounting anything anything my guess is iqnix is really wanting to figure out what to do next since earlier they also did do the ic's for the note 80 and curve 87 earlier this month our next interest check takes us to the balkans where we can take a look at gmk yugo which is inspired by the yugo gv sports yay for this set already having row colors figured out this set definitely takes inspiration from the yugo really exceptionally well the symbol set looks quite nice, and I think it reminds me uh, quite a bit of yellowed Soviet boards you could find on eBay. I do think it's funny that there's a separate capitalism kit for proper ANSI support. And you know what? This reflects greatly on the community running this set. They're making a set out of their locale, and it shows. This is a great set, and I wish the best for it. The Yugo MK community is aiming for a November 2019 group buy. I really hope it goes well for them. If I join, I'll be in for the base capitalism kit and Zavasta kit. This is the right attitude to have. Instead of complaining about kits not having your compatibility, just make it with your compatibility in the base, just like they did. MX Springs, they're fun. They're a great way to achieve your desired weight and a feel for a switch. And the mod itself is really simple, just a spring swap. Throughout our community, we've had different sources where we could get aftermarket springs it looks like we may be soon getting another one. Ethereal Sound is running an interest check for a new aftermarket MX Springs. If there are any force curve graphs or pictures, but a simple Google form expressing your interest. So check it out when you get a chance. Fill out that form. This next set is one I think a lot of people will be really looking forward to. It's the interest check for EPVT G81 SAV Reload by Senro. Inspired by the G81 3000 SAV, this is an interesting Russian and English board that displays Cyrillic legends on the alphas on top and Latin legends front printed. I think this will be one of the cooler, more awesome EPPT sets out there. The vendor for this set will be Thickthock with an expected price of $80 plus shipping, which seems pretty good considering the amount of keycaps you'll be getting. Yeah, I'm excited to see the renders when they finally come out and I have high hopes for the set. The G81 3000 SIV is not an easy keyboard to come by for a lot of people and the set looks absolutely beautiful and I think this is a great alternative to the real deal. The last IC for the week is something I think will be game changing and probably not the way you expected it to be. It's the interest check for JTK's new plastic trays. Yep, plastic trays. This 410 millimeter by 250 millimeter tray can store around 280 1U keycaps, which means that these trays have plenty of real estate for sets. With that much space, you can easily fit a GMK base kit along with any other side kits you've purchased for the set. 
Their current trays have a bit of a tight fit for some keycaps. So as long as they fix that issue with this new tray moving forward, this is gonna be an amazing way to store any set you have. When I get my hands on this, you can bet I'll be ordering at least a dozen of them. That's it for the news this week, but I'll have more news to go over later this week, as well as some other videos that I've been cooking in the lab. If you like this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing since that helps this channel out immensely. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.